Alright guys, it's Toddy here for Toddy's Digs in Search in Scotland Limited. Um, I've got the White's MX Sport with me today. And you've probably seen some of my videos on YouTube before, uh, the T2 and the G2 videos. I love metal detectors. Um, I've been through them all. I used to have a shop selling metal detectors. I loved them that much. And my passion used to be hammered coins, just finding hammered, but it's always been metal detectors. And to see what they can do and if maybe one's better than the other. I've always tried to put one against the other to see and push the machine to get as much as I could at it. And regarding this machine, the, um, I used the White's MXT for many years as well as the DFX. I was also the founder of the White's Owners Forum way back in the early 2000 and it was a massive forum that was just all White, White's users. Because at that time, Whites were predominantly, um, it was like Whites, Mine Lab and Fisher and Tesoro. That was the machines that you were after. And to be perfectly honest, you don't see many Whites machines now. And the Whites machines are still first class metal detectors. I've nothing to sell. I've got absolutely nothing. This isn't my machine. When I'm finished with it, I'm going to send it back up to Whites. Because Angela asked me, did I want to try it? Because I was a fan of the MXT. But the first thing I noticed using it, and to be fair, I was disappointed as it's not an MXT. It's absolutely nothing like a White's MXT, uh, the old machine. It doesn't sound like it. Um, Feel-wise, I'm not caring how it feels, but it, it, sound-wise, um, performance-wise, it's a different machine. And to be perfectly honest, I had it for a month, I was using it. And th through work commitments, I never get using it, but... I really felt a wee bit disappointed that it wasn't an MXT. Wasn't it? It's a Scottish word. It wasn't an MXT. But after leaving it lying for a month and then getting back to it um, with a fresh mind and a fresh outlook that treat it as a different machine because when I was using it, uh, it was getting good depth and I, I was getting used to the different sounds. It's, it's, as I say, it's not an MXT, so if you're buying it thinking, it's going to have an MXT mode in it, it's no, but maybe the MX Sport Plus or whatever they bring out should have that in it because it would it would make it an absolute phenomenal buy. Um, so I'm going to have a wee play about with it and we're going to start on coin and jewellery mode. So I'm going to show you a few wee things, so maybe a beginner getting this or somebody new getting this and sticking it in coin and jewellery mode. There's a few wee things that you need to watch out for that you'll end up losing a lot of fines. When you buy any metal detector, if you're a beginner, um, if you've not got any test pieces, you can see in this video, first thing you need is some iron, right? some lumps of iron, just your general bits of iron. I'm not being um, really pernickety here. And the, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because in the UK, there's nobody done an actual test on this machine, a proper the, um, a proper um, introduction to this machine. They've opened the box. I think one of the other YouTubers opened the box. Says, "Hey, this is a great machine. Look at it. It does this. Blah blah blah." I'll get back to you. And never get never put another video up. Somebody else has tried it, and to be fair, it was crap. I'm no slagging him. I'm no mentioning any names. It was rubbish. First thing you do when you get a metal detector, especially in the UK, is you get some test pieces. And if you're a beginner. If you've no go to them, ask some of your club members um, or buy them. Just buy them and it, it does you to test your machine and it'll save you a lot of, a lot of um, lost finds and a lot of heartache down the road. Okay, digging unwanted targets. The first thing you do is you get some iron. Okay. And then you get a big, big milled silver. Like a big crown, a real silver crown. That's a Queen Victoria crown I found. Okay? And really, that's your two ends of the scale. Okay? This goes from, let me see, I'll put the light on. It's minus 95 to zero, from zero to plus 95, just like the old whites, uh, DFX and XLT hit, ran from minus 95 to zero, from zero to plus 95. And it was brilliant and whites led the way for many, many years on the machines. And they still do with the whites V3i. It's a, an absolute astounding machine. 
and it just needs promoted a wee bit more and a wee bit more people using it but it's a fantastic machine um, so that's your two ends of the scale okay iron and a big silver that big silver 93 plus 93 so that's right up at that scale so you've got minus 95 to 0 from 0 right up to plus 95 right this comes in minus 30 another bit higher minus 28 okay so it's these are that's a round ball of iron and that's a bit of what do you call it just a bit of an old it's had a ring round it and a nail, so it's got a ring on it, which should probably make it way higher. There you go. So, you know, most of your iron's going to come in up to the zero mark. That's where most of your iron will come in. And it's usually, it probably come up to about minus 10 on this machine. The next thing you're going to ask me, if you're an experienced detector, is coke, right? There's a bit of coke. And before we say it, all single frequency machines dig coke. What it is, is the more you use the machine, the less coke you dig because you start getting used to it and you need to dig hundreds of it to start with. So the less, uh, the more you use it, the less coke you dig. And recognising it, coke comes in in all different sizes from small to big and they'll all give different targets. But usually in the whites, uh, the old whites, coke usually come in double zero up to plus five. So you knew when it fell into that range. So if it was hitting double zero, 40, double zero, 30, double zero, 60, uh, plus two, 50. You know, if it's hitting into that range all the time, if it's banging into double zero all the time, that's telling you it's probably coke. That's bang on, double zero, absolutely bang on. Give me the camera and I'll show you. There's a the camera there. There's a, it's there. So that lets you see, I'm not telling any porkies, but I've absolutely need to tell porkies that. So your lowest conductors are your iron, then it's your coke. The next thing you should have is a wee cut half, okay? Because that's really where we start to get interested, all right? So a cut quarter, cut half. In Scotland, I think I found one cut quarter and I usually run my machines in all metal and I dig everything usually above a uh, double zero to plus plus four if I was on a white. So <clears throat> um, I very rarely found cut quarters. So what I do is I cut half, a wee scabby cut half and that's coming in plus six and as you can see it's dropping, hitting plus four but it's mostly staying plus eight I've dropped the sensitivity in this right down. And the good thing about this machine, you notice when they're further away, the tone gets higher. So I think some of the manufacturers call that up averaging. What that means is if it's the machine's not sure, rather than throwing it into the iron, but a lot of the older machines done, it'll throw it up the way so that you'll dig it anyway. So there you go, that's definitely a digger. And what I've done with this machine is, for the beginners, um, I'll just change something for you, right? So I'll put the tones to one tone, right? So come back to here. Iron. So your iron and a big crown sound the same. That's the way the old machines were when they had no discrimination, right? So you really had to dig everything. Then some wee clever guy come along and says um, we could add discrimination, okay? Which meant that if you put discrimination on, let me see, we'll play, have a wee play a bit with this, right? Disc, right, so... There we go. And we'll discriminate all the way up to plus four, right? There you go. 
Okay, so what he done was invented discrimination. Okay, which meant you were still getting a big crown, but you didn't hear the iron. Fantastic, how good is that? Great, you don't have to listen and dig all that iron anymore. The machine is still actually detecting it, but it's just going in here and it's not letting you hear it. So now you've got hey, your wee cut half. Got that? Okay. Your iron. You heard the machine try to give a signal on it there, but and then it just cut it out. So the discriminator's doing its job and it's cutting it out and it's not letting you hear it. Okay. So that was a the next move up. So some guys were moaning, oh, it'd be great that everything sounds the same. Beep, beep. So some of the American guys were thinking, it'd be great if you could just hear the nice high silvers, like your big silvers, in, in the parts. And you didn't have to dig. Don't forget, this was the days before meters. So everything was sounding the same, your big old drums were all sounding the same. So some clever wee dude invented different tones and it started off at three tones, four tones. So we'll just up this. Right, let me see. Tones. So two tones, right? We'll see how it goes. B cut half. Still the same. So it's a good day, two tones. Two tones, what I'll do is, if I turn off the iron discrimination, if I take the disc off, right? And then, let me see, dude. So I'm take, um, what I'm doing is I'm taking all the, the, the disc off. So I'm taking it all the way, so which means is, Minus 95 is open to zero, from zero to plus 95 is open. All right, so now, hey, my iron gives a grunt. Now I can hear the iron, so what benefit is that to me? Well, when you can hear the iron, if you're cutting the iron out, you imagine you've got six bits of iron and then a gold ring at the end, right? So you go like that and your machine cuts out the iron. Your machine's got a recovery speed and a recovery time, so when that machine detects it, it goes up to the discriminator, hit the sides, oh, that's rubbish, I'm not letting you hear it, and then allows the machine to start detecting the next signal. What happens is, if we went over that bit of iron and it was, there was a gold ring and a coin in between it, it would go straight over it. Okay, because you're sweeping that fast, you can't hear it. So you're just sweeping along with the thing, uh, not really understanding that there's loaded with iron there because you can't hear it. So what happens is, using this method, method, if you can hear the iron, it will make you slow down because you'll say, hold on a minute, there could have been something here, there might have been an old house, anything, there could have been a cat that's been laying rotten and there's stuff lying there and there's coins in among it. So... That makes you slow down. It also makes you slow down because you're thinking, right, I need to give my machine a chance. Or if it's got an option to use a faster mode, which is get faster recovery speed, then you would change to that mode. Or um, if it's got the option to, like your DFX and the V3i, to up the recovery speed, that's what you would do. You would up the recovery speed so as it gives your machine a chance. Do you know what I mean? To try and find the stuff. Because if that wee totty thing there, like that, is in between two bits of iron and you're sweeping fast, which I see some guys doing running over the field, you've missed it. You've absolutely missed it. You need to go slow and low. That's the secret. Okay. So that was uh, your reason for two tones. While we're on two tones, as you can see, um, iron's going to give a grunt. Um, we hammer penny, Edward Penny. Nice lovely tone gold ring. We Roman Denarius. So that's basically no digging and I'm digging it. So it's basically gonna everything from zero to plus ninety-five is gonna give you the same tone. 
But some guys maybe be thinking, maybe American guys were thinking, but we really don't want to dig anything, uh, any uh, foil and all that kind of stuff, and they've not got hammered coins, so they're all interested in high conductors. So in this machine, there's no three tones, which I'm a wee bit disappointed about. Um, I would have liked iron, mid range is your, what do you call it, in the coin of jewelry mode I'm talking about. Um, mid range and then high conductors, it jumps for two to four tones. So what we're going to do is, we're going to leave it with uh, the disc wide open and I'm going to change the tones to four. Now, if a beginner was using this, they were thinking that's a good mode, they like to sound it because you're listening. Nice high tone, iron, but it coke, great, foil, oh, no so good, if you're hearing that on foil, it means your hammies are going to, so on this machine, if you're going by tone only, your hammies are coming in the same as iron, hammered, gold ring, just break out it, right, we Edward Penny, hammer coin, nice, not a wee thin hammy, you've lost it, so you've lost a cut half, you've lost a wee hammy, that could be all the evidence that you, you get in a field all day, so if you have had that in four tones and you think that's a good sound, and you haven't done your wee tests, you wouldn't be any the wiser and you would have been out and onto the field and you'd have lost the two hammered coins. Now you might go on a field and think, I'll give it a couple of hours, three hours or four hours and you're detecting and you don't get anything, you think it's rubbish. Now you could have went over that, if you'd have found the two things, it might have kept you on that field and you never know, it might have turned out a fantastic field. But you've lost it because you've not understood your machine. So it's all about practicing with each mode and I'm just focusing on coin and jewellery mode on this one. Alright, the next one it goes up to options we put it to eight tones eight tones it's basically i am and then segregated all the way up okay so what it's done is is the higher the conductor the higher the sound's going to be so there's your big crown nice big penny nice silver Love token, musket bow, mini bow, Roman denarius, gold ring, rock PC, Eddie Penny, V Toti Hammered, Boyle, Cut Half, Coat. Day, but it's coming in double zero. But if you were going with tones alone, here it's kind of missing. But a bit of coke would hit in there. If you've gone with tones, you would dig that. Iron. So as you can see, eight tones is just iron, and then from zero all the way up to plus 95, that's divvied up into tones. I quite like the 20 tones, as you'll hear, because it's um, it gives you more of a variation because I love a big high pitch for a silver that's the way the mine lab explorer was in the e-track when you went over a nice bit of silver <whistles> sang at you so you've got a wee bit of iron that stays the same iron coke bang on double zero right cut a half slightly higher see it six eight is coming in boil that's actually coming in higher up than a cut half. Do you know what I mean? So you need to dig your foil, right? We have it. It's well the same as the foil, the exact same. Gold ring. You know it's that fluty sound. That's what it's just changing the cusp, the different tones. So that's what gives you that fluty sound. There you go. No bad recovery speed there. Denarius, nice and high, coming in at 42, is that same as a musket ball? V silver, 
it's on the curved jump between the two tones. Next wee bit of silver, it's a King Mully. King Mully, yep. Is it my King Mully? No, it's a Queen Anne, sorry. Penny. I love this, look at that, imagine hitting money. How good is that? That's what American guys want when they're looking for the big dollars. Is that 93, 92? Brilliant. Now that's two coins left. See? So it's all about learning the machine, learning the tones, and what do you call it? Just getting a, a mental note in your mind of uh, what you're digging so that you can run that, ma that machine in uh, zero disc so that you're, you're opening it wide up right down to minus 95. That's what, that's what I do. Um, I run a machine wide open. I always have for years and years because it allows the machine to detect better for a start. It doesn't put anything in its road so that it's got to cut. When you start adding discrimination, it will slow the machine down a wee bit. So, and it slows the response time down. So, leave your machine wide open, learn the tones, Go nice and slow, and you'll find the wee stuff. Yeah. So that's the coin in jewellery mode. Machines, a lovely machine. You've got a backlight. You've got um, tracking, so you can have it in locked tracking or a uh, tracking mode. Um, where you would use locked tracking is if there's loads of iron and what you would do is you'd ground balance it in a nice clean bit of ground and then you would lock the tracking. The reason for that is if you were in tracking mode and it was going over the bits of iron and the bits of cork, the machine is constantly, it'll track into the iron and then it'll go into the ground and track back to the ground and then track to the cork, track back to the ground and this is what happens. And uh, the machine is constantly chasing the tracking, but if you you find that the, the field fields don't generally change yeah, in ground balance in Scotland, maybe the odd occasion, but most fields will, will stay roughly the same, and you can get away with keeping the tracking uh, basically in the same position. So if you find a nice bit of ground, ground balance it, lock it, and detect. If there's not a lot of iron, then by all means leave it in tracking mode and let the machine keep it at its optimum. Okay, that's what tracking's for, and that's what lock tracking's for. Um, we've covered the tones. Yeah. Audio modulation, modulation. There you go. Modulation one. Right, so. Hear it? Goes quiet. So we'll put modulation on, right? So what it's doing is when something's at its limit, I've only got the sensitivity to three on here, right? So when something's at its limit, it will still give you a loud signal. The Mine Lab Explorer, they they done that and it was it gave you wee faint signals like your wee cut halves at its limit. Still gave you the same same loudness of target as it did right near the coil. So if you put modulation on, then hear it? Close to the target, and then it, it tapers off as it gets further away. Well, you might say, what benefit is that? Well, it benefits uh, coin hunters um, in parks in America and things like that. If there were surface targets for the first so many inches, and they were they were given good signals, if they knew the old stuff was deep, they'd, they'd been getting searched, and they knew the old coins were deeper. What they would do is put modulation on, and when they heard those faint signals, like there's your big pen. When they heard those nice faint signals, they would dig it because it's not the first couple of inches where all the trash is getting dumped. Then that would that would be the reason they would use that. So it has it has got its uses. That's the reason it's on. Yeah, let me see. Um, salt track. The beach uh, frequency frequency is no, that isn't a multi frequency it's just if it was other machines interfering with you but just change it and that works 
bang on. See if you get an interference, there was an electric fence and I just changed it, cancelled it. It was first class, I was really impressed with it. Your backlight's ideal. If I turn that off just now, even in the house, um, uh, what do you call it? I would struggle to see it. It's, it's quite dull. The minute I put that on, it's brilliant. And you can put different levels. Let me see. I'll do it. So you can put it different brightnesses right up, which is good. Different different types of light. Okay, next we've got depth and inches for your pinpoint things like that. I'm not really a Disney appeal to me. I'm not interested in depth. I just want to hear the target and dig it. Um, let me see. Because it usually lies, it's based on coin size targets, and a coin could be lying like that, and it, it's no like a coin, then is it? it it's based, based not on that, it's, it's a load of rubbish, don't, don't bother about depths. Let me see, threshold. Um, it says in the manual that threshold was basically uh, superficial, it didn't make any difference to the machine's performance. Why even listen to it? It'd be good in prospect mode or an all metal mode if you're used to that sound, if it's affecting it. Um, let me see what it says with prospecting. Right, for gold nugget searching, also great for prospecting for other types of natural occurring metal, copper, silver, nickel, etc. Right, turn that down. Oops, let me see. Right, let's see what Options. I always need to press the option. Right, let me see if you want The MX port can be used in silent search, no sound until a target is detected or with a threshold, steady continuous background hum, with virtually no difference in maximum detection depth. However, searching with a continuous threshold has the advantage of pro providing more inf information regarding what the detector is seeing. The threshold fading to silent indicates other rejected targets or a ground anomaly. By focusing more closely around that spot, often a good target can be found near trash. Rubbish. You're not interested. You're going to, you're going to just detect. If it's not making any difference to your depth rating, I wouldn't even bother with a continuous hum. Why hear a hum when you don't need it? All right? Reject volume when we were on here. Discrimination normally suppresses the audio sound beep of metal targets that are selected for rejection. Although some rejected targets produce some broken audio sounds, as much audio suppression as possible. Reject volume allows a user to change from suppressing the audio beep to assigning the rejected target a volume level beep lower than that of the accepted target. Searching in this way allows one to hear and immediately recognise the rejected target and thus slow down and check for possible targets in that area. That's that's what I was saying to you. Um, if you're running wide open, you can hear it. So it gives you different permutations. Zero, normal discrimination audio. Rejected target audio is suppressed, so you're not hearing anything. Uh, if you're running it at 10, audio volume is rejected target. It's 10% that of accepted target. So what it's basically meaning is if you're running with disc on and you just want to hear uh, some a wee bit of iron volume, then that's what it's for. It's not actually for how loud it is. Yes, it is when you're rejected from minus 95 to zero or wherever you want to reject, and you're just allowing a little bit of iron volume in so as you can just hear it. We'll try it, right? Let me see. Reject volume. Right, so first of all, I'll go to disc. Right, menu. Disc, and I will disc all the way up to double zero. Disc, right? Right, that's me done that, right? And we'll get the reject volume and we'll put it at zero. Right, that's that's it at zero, right? Nothing. That's just because it's a round ball, that's a hard thing for a machine, because it when it's like that it looks like a coin, right? Nothing. So what we'll do is we'll change it, we'll put it to 10, right, and then menu, 
get it. That's good. Right, we'll change it again. 20. So rather than getting a near bashing, um, it's allowing you just to hear it quietly. Perfect. Just like the iron volume on the gold max. Simple. I'm not, as I say, I'm not caring about messing and other makes and models of machines. I'm not tied to any manufacturer. I'm doing this for my own benefit. So um, the gold max done that. But to be fair, the white early whites models had had that option. Uh, you were running the VCO mode. Um, the DFX, I could set it up so that I was getting an iron grunt as well. But that's good that you can change the different sounds. So we'll put it again. We'll put it to max, right? 70. Then lower. 50. You still get your V cut. There you go. Perfect. So you get the gist of that. Modulation we've covered. Frequency, light, inches and depth. No bothering about that. So there you go. That is us covered um, coin and jewellery mode. I know I've rabbled on a wee bit longer. Uh, 33 minutes in coin and jewellery mode. Um, I do like my machines and I like to blend it. I love metal detectors. And as you can see, notice I've got that, I've made that coil flat at the bottom. It's because they're there. I've made that flat at the bottom, it's perfect for this. Made it nice and flat here with wee bits, it's perfect. Um, regarding the machine's build, build quality, usual wipes, brilliant. A wee bit, I'm not saying a wee bit on the heavy side, it's, this is, this is uh, the same way as your, your uh, general metal detectors. No, your, your deuces and that, your tesoros, where they're really light. I think the battery gives it a wee bit of weight, but they're on the right track. Um, they're changing the machines for the big metal boxes and the that look is waterproof which is perfect i'm going to try it in the water uh, so bulk quality it's really good i can't fault it and it's got other coils available for it which i might try i might see if i can get hold of one and try it but um we're just going to go over the different different modes then we'll get out in the field and we'll do something new so this is part one coin and jewelry and a wee introduction Remember, um, my name's Toddy for Toddy's Digs. I run Digs in Scotland, metal detecting rallies. Also, I teach scuba diving, I do underwater detecting as well. So if anybody wants to learn anything about that, they can contact me on my website, www.toddies-digs.co.uk. You get me on Facebook, at Toddy's Digs, same as Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, YouTube, we've got loads of videos on YouTube. I'm all over the place. Okay. Um, hope you enjoyed that. It's been a pleasure talking about this wee machine, coin and jewellery mode. Next one we're going to go over is relic mode. Open it out. This time we're going to go through some more programs. Um, I've put on a relic mode. To be honest, I was a wee bit disappointed in relic mode. Um, I was hoping that would be like the MXT, that's how I was a wee bit disappointed. Um, the MXT gave you a nice grunt now. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I've got it on my tones. But um, it gave you a nice rip, rip, rip grunt. And then when you went over like a bit of silver, or even a wee, even that, a wee cut half, it gives you a really high, really high sharp sound. And that's what stopped you in your tracks. Um, I feel with the MX Sport two tones, I would have loved two tones to be an iron grunt. Um, my battery's going a wee bit low on my camera. Let me see. Um, this will take me 10 minutes and then I'll change it. Um, charger, uh, charge your GoPro to proceed. Got it. Alright. Um, it's great, isn't it? You can work it off your, your iPad and that. It's great. Um, so what I'm saying is, um, I would have loved for it being a 
a nice grunt and a high patch whereas this is quite near which you might say isn't a problem because I can put it in 8 tones or the 20 tones which is the variation but I'd have liked it just to have been two, two tones but separate so that you've got a low tone and a high tone which are really separate whereas new now they're about here as you can see when I change right let me see uh, let's see what the tones are on I've got wide open I've got not got any dis discrimination on tones right there's your one tone there's your hammer penny sounds the same just like coin and jewelry which I've done two tones this is what I was hoping would be the Just the same as a cut half, basically. So there's no, as you can see, it's I know it's it's a bit there, but it'd have been nicer if it was higher. It's just me. I love that E sharp sound of MXT. But as I say, it's easy, we can change the tones, well up the tones to 20 again, which we've done with the coin and jewelry. It's just me personally, I, I'm not really keen on that, I'd rather just use coin and jewellery, it's basically just the same. To be fair, the recovery speed is rapid. You're not, you don't need it much faster than that. Recovery speed's rapid. Um, so, uh, we can mess about with that really, but... Me personally, I would probably use it in 20 tones again. Um, I'm not being a damp squib and moaning about it. Um, and that's the, the VCO on, right? Which is just gives it a root, root, gives it that nice. Here the VCO. What point's it? There's really no point with this. It's a different uh, setup. VCO on, VCO off, it's absolutely iron grunt, um, put the iron grunt on, yeah. now you're getting a wee grunt off the iron, gold drum, cut half, which is good for that. So that's where your coat usually comes in there. The double zero here. Right? I used to do this when I had my shop. There's your ready penny. So if you imagine you were on a bit and it was littered with coat, but there was hammies there, can you imagine that some machines, if you put the, the hammer coin behind that, so you imagine the coat's lying there and the hammies there, you've missed it. So if we put that behind it, getting it, which is good, see that? Machine 20, 24, 26. Right, I don't think I'll get the cut half, let's try it. Try the cut half. Struggling. Try the gold ring, right? Gold ring. So if I was about a coat and there was a gold ring line there, and you had your machine set to cut co coke out. A lot of machines would cut that out. Add in the soil and then get a different ball game. Let's see what it has. Now that's coming in. Just get a test out. Right, we'll, we'll disc that out. Right, let me see. So we'll put the disc right on. Right, let me see. Right. Give me a minute, we'll put the iron volume on a wee bit. 
Reject volume. Just me personally. Oh. Horrible sound in it. That's how I'm really the disc. I think the disc was better than coin and jewelry. I'll turn the iron volume off. That's a discrimination on the relics, but, which a lot of guys like. They like to hear the, high, the iron spin. Sounds too much like a cut half, doesn't it? So anyway, that's the relic mod. Um, I would personally use 20 tones again, um, I didn't really see much difference between that and your coin and jewellery. Um, we'll mess about with programs again. Um, let me see a minute. I noticed on that you've got a thing called SAT, self adjusting threshold, which is usually for an all metal program, it helps maintain a steady threshold. Like in prospect, a lot of machines are like prospecting mode. Um, that's what it's for. Right, so I don't know that. Change of program. Right. Right, all metal. Again, had my hopes up for all metal. Right, because I basically work in all metal. Right, so that's me in all metal. Right, we'll go through the options. Salt track off. Frequency zero. Light one. Right. Volume 10, threshold, if you want a threshold for all metal, gives it a wee buzz. Right, as it says it, it says it doesn't affect depth, so it's just for people that's used to it. Disc at zero. Right, reject volume. Do you believe there? We'll put the VCO on, because I like VCO on machines. Iron grunt. Right, we'll turn it off at first, and we'll see what happens. Right, so there's your... I need an iron grunt, don't you? Because everyone's going to start sounding the same. I need an iron grunt. So there's your iron grunt. There's your wee Roman silver. Again, I would like that to be a higher pitch. There's your big silver. Just sounds the same. Go to tone, right? No, no, because there's no tones. So there you go. That's where you're locked. That's where you're lumbered with. A grunt. Of that. It's not got that nice high pitch. It's, too, uh, 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 uh. it's quite low. I'm not into that. Right, so patch up, I'm not into that. Right, programs. We'll leave the beep to now. Prospecting, I had hope for that as well. Right. Um, let me see what features what we've got first. Salt track, frequency light, volume, threshold, disc, leave that new reject volume, ECO on. Iron grunt off. Right, we need that one. Right. Yeah. Gold ring. Keep it there. Sounds a bit. That's a bit more like it. Some guys like that. It's like your G2s. Again, I would have liked it a wee, wee bit higher tone. So, whites, if you bring out a MXT Sport Plus or something, could you put that option in to make that VCO get higher? You know what I mean? Make it a higher sound. It's 
sounds quite the same. So if that was a wee deep target, you know, sounds quite similar. So you would dig that. I know the meters. I'm not really into constantly looking at meters. But slower recovery speed because it's for gold. You would be going nice and slow. We need to test them for depth. That might be the proof in the pudding. They might do it in the field. And I might say, oh, that mode's great. And another machine kicks its butt. So that's for us to test on the field. Uh, and on the beach. The beach is a different ball game. I prefer multi-frequency for beach. Um, but we'll get, a, we'll get a definite go in the water. I'm actually under the water. Um, no below three metres. And we'll get a test. So I think I've went through most of the features, your iron grunts just on or off, um, just prospect mode, we'll leave that out, I would rather stick to me personally, for my testing using the programme, um, Coin of July, the one I was using, and we'll look at the features, volume, threshold, don't need that coin and jewelry. Why listen to a buzz when you don't need it? Disc. Um, um, the good feature was um, the disc. Again, we can put some disc on. Right up to zero. You can even do it right up to plus five. Okay. And then 20 tones which are light. Reject volume. So you're just doing the headphones, you maybe only need that two or three. Audio modulation off, I don't want modulation, I want to hear the deep targets. And that's basically it. So what we've got here is... Nice view low buzz. Nothing wrong with that, that's perfect. You cut half. You hear me? See? Recovery speed's big. You're not going to be going any quicker than that unless you're Cosmo. Well, I like him, Cosmo. Imagine going along in the field and hearing this. That's where you know you're going to get a big silver, but it could be a bronze age axe, a spearhead. You hear that big, nice, high sound. Brilliant. So, I think out of the whole lot so far, um, sounds wise, um, just usability, just for me, I've been using coin and jewellery, as I say, I went through most of the options, and the options are there, but I was a wee bit disappointed in some of them, sounds wise, no, I'm not talking about performance, I'm talking about sounds, for me, I like uh, certain sounds, and the nearest I've got to sounds that I like is through the coin and jewellery mode, and I think that's a good option, and that's what I'll be sticking to just now. As I say, as you use machines, you change and you start different situations, you maybe another programme will shine through. But so far, coin and jewellery mode, as I say, it's been pretty good. There's your coke, because I've dissed out double zero, see it? And if you were on the field, you would work that for different angles, right? There's your wee Eddie Penny. Stick that behind it again. Dig that all day. Um, let me see, we go down behind it. Dig that all day. Plus six, plus four. So, it's doing its job. It is a job. Ryan.
happy with that. I'm happy with the bulk quality of the machine. Um, battery performance, I've had the batteries in for ages and it's still working. Excellent, yeah, a good set of rechargeables and you never need to buy batteries. Um, stability in the field, I've used it in auto track and I've used it in locking, uh, track locked, and it's perfect. The mistake you'll make is running the sensitivity too high. And some machines you can run the sensitivity high and it just spits and pops, but it's in the background, you can get away with that. This machine, like other machines like your T-Johns and different other machines, they don't let you away with that because it sounds like good targets and then it disappears and it just makes the detecting experience quite annoying. So don't run it too hot. Run it so that it's nice and stable and it's no spitting and popping all over the place. And you'll be surprised at the depth you get and how sensitive it is, the small stuff you get. It's really sensitive. Um, it's a good machine, can't afford it. So, I look forward to putting more videos up uh, actual on the field. This is just bench testing it. And again, if you're going to buy a machine, make sure you've got a wee array of fines just to test it. That's the basics. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed talking about the machine and I hope um, you've enjoyed it as well and tune back in and subscribe to my channel please and help me get my channel views up alright over and out